All Gravy with Teresa. Good morning. This is Teresa with um, It's All Gravy with Teresa. I kind of forget sometimes what I'm talking about. Um, we're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's a beautiful day, a little bit overcast, but the temperature is just absolutely wonderful today and the humidity is not near as bad. Uh, if you hear a little bit of noise going on in our subdivision, we have a little construction going on, uh, which is actually good news in these times. Um, you know, people have been out of work and, you know, the hammering and it really doesn't bother me that bad, just knowing that life is going on. Um, so this morning, today, Clint is here and we are going to do a favorite of Teresa's restaurant. Uh, every Thursday for 20 some years was meatloaf day. And we sold a absolute ton of meatloaf. Just good, basic meatloaf. And this is another recipe that you're gonna be able to um, design it for your family and what they like and what they don't like. Uh, you know, you can hide a few things in there. Uh, the onions, if you chop them up small, the kids are going to eat them and not even know they're getting them. Uh, makes the meatloaf taste better, and onions are really good for you. Um, there's different ones. You know, sometimes I put garlic in mine. Um, all different ways that you can make a good meatloaf, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, just a few things about It's All Gravy. Uh, First and foremost, I want to thank you all so much for uh, following, liking us, sharing our page. Um, we're still just uh, over the moon about how fast this has taken off. Uh, and I'm so grateful to you all for making that happen. Um, you know, if this is all it becomes, is just me getting to talk to you guys for a little bit, that's fine too. Uh, but you know me, I've always got things rolling around in my mind. Uh, like I said, that Clint has to hold me down and remind me I'm 60 years old and I have lots of obligations. Uh, as much as I hate to admit it, I am not Wonder Woman anymore. Uh, that's a joke for my sister, Connie. <laughs> uh, so we also would like to uh, thank you, the ones who have donated um, or helped us out with Peloton. No, man. <laughs> I hate it. Patreon. Patreon. The ones who have went to that site and looked at it and checked it out and have uh, made a decision to kind of uh, help us out while doing this. It takes a little bit for the filming, for Clint's time, uh, for us checking in to different options and what we can do. Um, so you all be watching. We really don't know where we're going to go. Um, but we'll let you all know first what happens. Um, and I think that's it. We had, uh, Clint, do you remember the winner of the t-shirt? Alex Minton. Alex Minton uh, won the t-shirt. It's all gravy t-shirt that we gave away for reaching a thousand. Um, and we, my daughter-in-law and granddaughter, Mandy and Maddie, are in the process of getting that printed. And I will get it out in the mail this week. Uh, so, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for liking, following, and sharing. Uh, and we will do that again for the next thousand uh, that we get to. So, I'm so excited about that happening. Um, we also, was there something else? I don't, maybe not. So. I'm just listening to what's happening over here. Maybe this was not a great idea. Uh, but we've got, uh, we mentioned the Patreon. We mentioned the t-shirt. We mentioned when we hit 2,000, we're going to give away another t-shirt. Uh, if you would like, and it's all gravy t-shirt, um, just private message me. And we will get that taken care of. I'll tell you what the, uh, hi, Tamitha. <laughs> Uh, Tamitha is my cousin, and she works for your real estate. Premier Properties, South Central Kentucky. 
premier properties of South Central Kentucky. And we always like to give a shout out to small business and to people who are trying to survive in these times. So that's a shout out to Tamitha. Y'all watch her. She does great uh, video showing property. Uh, she, she doesn't say mm and ah as much as I do. So she's kind of got it figured out. Thank you for the egg cartons. Love you. Um, so, uh, where was I at? Um, we talked about the already t-shirt that we've done. Oh, right. And then we're going to, when we hit another 2,000. Which we're at 1,300 now. Oh, we're at 1,300 already. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we'll be giving away another t-shirt. And um, I guess that's it. I'm just kind of at a loss right now. I know that we're going to go in and make meatloaf here in a minute. If you want to know the true story, I am so tired from yesterday, uh, we took the children, and Clint went with us, and we went to Shaney Hollow, which is just a uh, beautiful little spot right here in our area, uh, and I was so glad to find it. I've heard of Shaney Hollow ever since I've, um, I've lived in this area forever, um, but I've never gone, and for whatever reason, I thought it was a little rougher than it was, or I really don't know why I hadn't went, uh, but we did. Uh, we went, and we actually, the reviews um, had said that the trails were a little bit dirty. So we, as a community service, had the kids all had to pack a garbage bag with them to pick up garbage as we were coming back out the trail. Uh, fortunately, it was um, nice. The trail was beautiful. Uh, very. We got a half a bag of garbage off the whole trail that we went. And it felt like 10 miles, but I'm thinking maybe it was a mile and a half uh, back to a little waterfall back there. Uh, but it's so much to look at, um, just so much beautiful foliage and the rocks, uh, formations, just the rocks there are just gorgeous. And they had a great time. We stayed about three hours there. Uh, so that's why I'm so tired and fuzzy this morning. Uh, my age has caught up with me. So, with that being said, we're uh, getting ready to go to the kitchen, but I always like to add in a little bit of something uplifting and, um, and tell you a little bit of my story. And when I was reading this morning, and I try to do that, I try to read uh, something, either the Bible or one of the books that I have, something to uh, get me in a good, uplifted mood uh, to help me through the day. Um, and today, um, I'm going to read out of the New King James Version of the Bible, and it is in Jeremiah 29, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And what that says to me is that I can let go of some of that control. I've always felt like I had to be in control of everything uh, when in reality nothing really worked out like I wanted it to or like I thought it would. Um, and that, that verse for me reaffirms that somebody bigger than me has control of things. And when I was thinking about it this morning, I was thinking of a few years back and it's actually been, you know, if you are a survivor of losing a child, your life is before, or losing a spouse, or not just a child, of a, a tragic loss for you. Uh, your life is before he died and after he died, or they. Um, and this was before, and uh, my husband at the time we had a vision of what our life was going to look at, or look like, uh, at this age where I'm at now. Uh, we were both really hard workers. Um, we had decided um, I wanted a farm. I lived on the farm and I loved it, but I hadn't got to do it in so many years because of the restaurant business. Um, he had been on a farm his whole life and kind of wanted away from it. But he, because I wanted it, uh, we decided that we would work towards this little baby farm 
And uh, by the time we were 60, uh, we could just sit back and enjoy it, go on motorcycle trips, whatever we wanted to do. So we worked very hard to accomplish that. In the midst of all that, uh, it just fell all apart. Uh, my son had a wreck. My husband had an affair. Um, not only an affair, an affair with somebody who worked with me at the restaurant. Um, and all of that, and then my son died. And my pride and ego, instead of me telling my husband how bad he hurt me, uh, I just put up a wall. And no matter, it could not, nothing compares to my son dying. Anything you've done to me um, is nothing to compare to this. And so we, all that was gone that quick. I mean, all that hard work, all that planning, everything was gone just in the snap, man, the snap of a finger. And my whole life started over again. Um, so all of that to tell you that here where I'm at now is fine. Uh, no, it's not where I thought it would be. Uh, but God has used every bit of that for His glory. Uh, these babies that we are helping, they're getting a shot at life of knowing that they are worthy, knowing that they are loved, and that wherever they go from here, that's what they're going to expect. They're going to expect somebody to love them, to listen to them, and to meet their needs. And if you don't do that, then they're going to tell you about it. And that's the way that I'm raising them. Um, so thank you all for listening to that little story. I hope that it helped someone today. I actually was going to do something different, and this just kept coming to my heart. Um, that, you know, we do not have to carry the weight of taking care of every little thing. Because it's already planned out. You know, just ease up and enjoy life. And I know that's so much easier said than done and uh, because I'm preaching to myself right now um, it is so hard for me to just be still and let life happen but when I do when I do just enjoy life I hear the birds sing I see the butterflies coming to visit me um, I see the sunset the sunrise just in such a glorious way uh, that it makes it all worth being here so thank you all so much. Thank you for listening to my ranting today and my uh, stumbling over my words. Uh, don't forget Tomatha, if you're looking for buying or selling something, she's with Premier Properties here in Bowling Green. Um, just a shout out to her. And we are headed to the kitchen to do a little cooking, guys. I'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you. Hey guys, you're in Teresa's kitchen and you're watching It's All Gravy with Teresa. And we are going to make a favorite today. It is homemade meatloaf. And um, I said earlier in the intro, if you made it through that, uh, that this was one of the favorites for years at Teresa's. And the reason it was a favorite uh, is because we made simple meatloaf. We didn't do any additives to it. Uh, a lot of people couldn't eat the green peppers. Uh, a lot of people didn't like celery. A lot of things that you grow up putting in meatloaf that I grew up putting in meatloaf. But people like just a good basic thing that they can add to to their self. And uh, that's what's great about this recipe. It's just good and simple, and you can add anything to it from uh, mushrooms, this time of year, fresh tomatoes, um, more onions, less onions, um, different spices, um, depending on your taste and what you like. Uh, if I was making this just for my husband, I would add some jalapenos in here. Uh, but the children won't eat it. So we're doing just a good basic meatloaf recipe today. Uh, and we're starting off with a pound and a half of ground beef. Uh, thank you to Bentley Farms. That's where we have been getting our meat from. And we are, that's all of our 
uh, trying to learn how to live off the land. Uh, we're in that process of trying to learn how to do that and not be so dependent. Um, so that's part of our our plan and uh, the Bentleys have helped us out with that. So a pound and a half of ground beef. Then we're going to add a cup of dry breadcrumbs. And you can go back and look through our videos and we have another thing of um, trying to live with what you got. We showed you a recipe on how to make your own breadcrumbs and croutons. So check that out. So we've got a cup of breadcrumbs and then we've got one small onion. Excuse me, Clint. I know I do it every time. But one small onion. We're going to put that in here. And I like mine chopped up pretty fine so the children don't notice that it's in there. So, one small onion. And then, this is a secret, the Worcestershire sauce. Uh, we're going to use two tablespoons of that. So there's one and two, and you know I don't care to run it over, put my bottles out. So there we go, two. We're gonna add one cup of milk. That can be whole milk, 2%, 1%. Um, we're gonna add that and get it started. And you know I'm going to use my hands here in a minute. But we've already washed our hands good. Our counters have been cleaned off and bleached. Uh, another thing from our uh, living with intentionally purpose uh, is our eggs. And this egg is from our hands. Uh, we're still getting, even this time of year, look how pretty. We're still getting um, six to eight eggs a day. So we're going to add that egg right there. Put all my stuff in the sink. And then my little containers I told you about the other day. I'm so proud of them. Uh, I've got a tablespoon of salt. And again, this can be adjusted for however you like it. Um, I just feel like salt, raw meat needs some salt to bring the flavors out. And then I've got a half of a tablespoon of pepper and we like pepper so you can adjust that to your likes and that is your basic recipe I'm gonna get it mixed up a little bit here um, while we're mixing before I stick my big hands in it um, I'm gonna mention our small business um, asking you to support them you know, I've told you before that both my sisters are in the restaurant business, and that's been a hard business to survive in, uh, not only for the employees, but for the owners. Um, so, Con Con's on Russell Road. Uh, Melissa's Country Cafe is also on Russell Road, just further out. Uh, Teresa's restaurant is still in business, and Heather's doing a great job down there, uh, trying to keep her employees working and her customers happy. Um, we talked to Tomatha this morning, who's with Premier Properties. Um, you know, we really, we really want to try and um, promote people who are, you know, this is hard times, not for everybody. Um, you know, the essential workers still have to get out there and the people in small business still have to get out there and try to make their bank payments. So we would appreciate, I know they would appreciate um, all the, all that you can do for them. Um, this is getting mixed up pretty good. So we have our oven on 350. It's already preheated. I've got a, um, this is again from Pampered Chef and I love this little loaf pan. Uh, it's a 9 by 13, I believe. I don't know if it'll tell me or not. No, it doesn't tell me, but I think it's a 9 by 13. 
And the reason I like to use this is that I can shape my meatloaf and then I can put the topping on the sides also. Um, so I've sprayed it with Pam. And I'm getting ready to mix my meatloaf up good. I'm going to add the ketchup. This is a third of a cup of ketchup. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. And that's a secret, too. That's going to make it so good. Um, and that we're going to put that on top before you put it in the oven to bake. A lot of people will put their ketchup on later and then bake it. Uh, but this recipe calls for doing it beforehand. I thought Clint was trying to tell me something. But he wasn't. We just got dogs barking. So you want to make sure that all of this, your mixture is mixed up really good so you don't have somebody that gets a bite of bread crumb um, or just a big bite of meat that's not been combined good. And um, talking about Wyatt and Allie at Bentley Farms, the hamburger, uh, usually when we get a, well, we've got a, a beef now, that a cow that we got processing with them, and I have it made just in hamburger and roast. And the hamburger is so good because it doesn't have any fat. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, when you say you've got two pounds of hamburger, you got two pounds of hamburger. Not a lot of grease and water runoff. So, we've got that. There, you can tell how good it's mixed up. Everything's all combined, all in good shape. I hear my honey coming in the door. Been out working, so I'm not fussing. So there it is. And we are gonna shape this into a loaf. And that's very easy to do if you've never done it before. Just kind of like Play-Doh. Just kind of start with what's in the middle. Then push your sides in. You really don't want anything touching the edges of the pan because those are going to burn, get done faster. So we're going to just keep messing with it. This was going to be a pretty one. You can see this is probably a little bit bigger than what you are going to have. I put two pounds in mine uh, just to make it go a little bit further for uh, when we sit down at the dinner table tonight. You know, I told you we have a lot to feed around here. But there, isn't that pretty? Okay. Let me rinse my hands off real quick, Clint, where I can get them dirty again. Off the hamburger, and I try to be real careful of um, you know not cross contamination. Um, something when you you start learning how to cook, uh, some things that we don't really think about. You know, you can take things from one product to another uh, that can make you sick. So just always try to be cautious and mindful of using one thing and going right to another one. Try to remember to wash your hands in between. All right, now we've got the ketchup and the brown sugar. And I'm just gonna mix that together. Just like that. I'm thinking about the different meatloafs I've made in my day. Uh, besides for work, I was thinking years ago, uh, Beth and Donald Burns um, came to our house for dinner. They were a young married couple and uh, they came to our house for dinner. And I made meatloaf and for some odd reason I got in my head that a can of mushroom soup would be so good in there. And so I added the mushroom soup plus the can of milk, which was way too much. And there was nothing gonna cook that juice out of there. 
And so they were both very polite and, you know, they picked around on their plate. Uh, but when I got in the restaurant business, Donald would come in to eat and he's like, no, I mean, you turned me off a of meatloaf a long time ago. So I don't think he ever tried a good meatloaf from me, but just a sweet memory. And that's a great thing about cooking. You know, they say that um, songs bring on memories and they do for me. Songs bring on lots of memories for me, but also cooking does. Uh, a special meal that somebody made you or just like that, the meal that failed, uh, you know, that was sticking my head forever. Uh, but try to do that for your family. Uh, try to start being intentional and cooking and sitting down at the table with your family and making memories. And I say that because for years at Teresa's, I didn't get to do that. My kids had home cooked food, but it came out of a to-go box because that's what we had at work that day. And we didn't sit down at the table because I was busy, tired. Um, so they sat down and ate uh, while I got things ready for the next day. And now one of the things I appreciate so much about my husband is he doesn't ask a whole lot from me other than we sit down at the table. And we do that every night. Uh, very seldom did we not sit down at the table and eat. And at that time, everybody gets to talk and talk about their day and how things went. We don't have any cell phones at the table. Uh, you just have to really have a conversation. And it's a food is a great way. If you ever need to get to know somebody, do it over food. Okay, we got all that done. Uh, this is getting ready to go in the oven. How pretty. We're going to put it in the oven that's already preheated at 350 degrees. And I told you my oven would start getting dirty. Look at that spots on there already. So there we go. We're going to bake this for one hour. You can go back in and check it. Uh, you know, I usually take a knife and just check and make sure the meat's done. Uh, some people like theirs a little more uh, brown inside, so you may have to cook it a little longer. And a long time um, oven temperatures, you know, so you can just, you can look back and forth after the hour and see where it needs to be. Uh, you'll need to let it set for at least 20 minutes after it comes out of the oven so you'll be able to slice it well. Uh, we're going to come back and look at it after it's done. I thank you all for watching, and we're going to talk to you in just a little bit. Thank you. All right, guys, here's exactly an hour, and our meatloaf looks great. I'm going to, just because I told you to do this, um, I'm going to, before I take it out, I'm going to put it right there in the middle, and that's good and done. See how it's ready to slice? It's not mushy. It's just perfect at one hour. And here she is. Gorgeous. And what I'll do is I'll drain this grease off and I'll put this on a platter and slice it up into slices. And this is gonna be our supper tonight. So but it just turned out gorgeous. So, I hope you make you a meatloaf. I hope it turns out great. This is pretty as this one. And when you do that, um, send us a message and a comment, a picture of it, and how your family liked it. Uh, I thank you all so much. I thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you real soon. God bless.